offered through nursing. It's not an actual nursing, you know, hands-on clinical course. It is designed specifically as a gen ed course for undergraduates. And we're very, very excited about working on this program together. Okay. My name is uh, Stavros Constantino. I am uh, the resident geographer on the OSU Mansfield campus, and I'm a native of Cyprus. I have done uh, the geography of, Cy of the European Union in Cyprus uh, two times in the past. We'll uh, go over it uh, later, and now we are trying to expand it and uh, have uh, Diane uh, join us. We'll uh, hopefully have a full credit hour courses going. By the time we get through this thing, it remains to be seen. Okay. All right. Thank you. So we will go ahead and get started. Um, so this program, um, this uh, program, this will be the first time that this program has run in the current format, um, but it has run previously as Geography of the European Union. Um, the in-country dates are May 5th to June 2nd, 2023. Um, so you will be traveling independently to Cyprus. Um, and if you are admitted, we will talk more about, you know, um, booking the, your flights and your airfare and the hows and the whys. Um, you will uh, travel to a couple of different sites in Cyprus. We'll talk a little bit about the itinerary um, later, uh, but so you'll be, you know, based in one location for majority of the time, and then there will be several field trips that will take you outside um, and exploring the, the places, uh, the other places around the, the country. Um, so this program is a collaboration between the College of Nursing and the Department of Geography. Um, but as Dr. Morrison Beatty mentioned, it is not a traditional nursing program. Um, it is more of a wellness, health and wellness open to all students. Um, so don't be intimidated by the nursing title. There is no sort of a pre-assumed knowledge of either the geography or the nursing. So you can feel free to apply for this program, you know, without any um, previous knowledge of either the the in either of those um, areas. Currently, um, you will be getting credit for either Nursing 2798 or Geography 3753 or both. Um, they are both currently worth three hours, but we are hoping um, and awaiting approval for them to be worth four hours. So um, they um, are pending approval um, and hopefully by the time they travel, they will be approved for those four hours. Um, this is kind of a, an experience where you will uh, receive both lecture um, based information and field experiences throughout Cyprus. Um, so the field trips and the field experiences will complement the, inf the, the information that you're gathering and learning through your lectures. Um, as mentioned, um, you can register for either or either course or both courses. Um, so when you submit your application, um, you'll let us know which course you're interested in registration registering for, and then we will provide instructions on how to get registered for those courses. Um, this will be a summer 2023 registration. So you will have a tuition charge for the course or courses that you choose on your statement of fees and accounts for summer 2023. And then at the end of the summer, um, once you know you have completed all the requirements for the course and traveled on the program, you will receive graded OSU credit for participation. And again, the credit um, is only for the in-country portion. There'll be no sort of on-campus, on-Columbus campus, on -Columbus campus um, uh, requirements that you'll have to attend class. So there's no need to sort of save time in your schedule. Um, we will, um, it will be all, the credit will all be earned in country and you'll register yourself for this course once you're admitted. So we'll provide further instructions once you're admitted to the course as to how to register. As far as the in-country accommodation and meal, so included in your program fee will be some of your meals and your accommodation. So you'll be staying in apartment style, double occupancy rooms with a kitchenette. Um, you will be staying with the other students in the group. So um, typically what happens is once students are all admitted, we'll bring you all together and you'll be given the opportunity to select your roommate um, so that you'll know who you're gonna be staying with prior to departing. 
Um, breakfast will be provided daily, so you'll get breakfast included with your program fee. And then some of your meals um, throughout the rest of the program will also be included. Um, you will also need to pay out of pocket for some of your meals. Um, and we'll talk a little bit of, more about what that budget kind of looks like um, later. Um, but you will have a kitchenette, so there will be opportunity to kind of, you know, store your own food and make your own food um, and kind of eat, you know, on what, at whatever budget level um, you can afford during the program. So the program fee has not been established yet, but we are working on it. Um, it will include your accommodation, your daily breakfast, program-related field trips, and some lunches and dinners. We're hoping to have um, at least an estimate in the next few weeks as to what that program fee will look like. And certainly by the time that, um, by the, time that the application deadline rolls around January 4th, um, we will have a program fee established so that you'll know going into your application what um, you will need to pay. Um, and then in addition to the program fee, you'll pay your tuition for up to eight hours of OSU credit. So depending on what course option you choose, um, you will also pay the tuition charge for those credit hours. Additional out-of-pocket items that you'll need to consider when you're putting together your budget. So um, you'll have your international airfare return to Cyprus. Um, you know, one of the benefits to doing these independent flights is if you choose to stay in Cyprus or travel throughout Europe before or after the program, you will have the flexibility to do that. Um, you can also travel from any airport, so you don't necessarily feel obligated to fly out of Columbus if there is another airport that is closer to your home or where you'll be um, at the time that the program begins. Your passport. So if you don't already have a passport, I would encourage you to apply for one as soon as you can. Um, currently, they're taking eight to 12 weeks, so you want to make sure that you have all of that taken care of and you're not rushing it at the end um, because it is an added stress and added expense if you do wait too long for that. Um, if you are a U.S. passport holder, there are, is no visa needed for travel to Cyprus, but if you are not a U.S. passport holder, um, a visa may be an additional expense that you may incur. Any additional travel related expenses like luggage or, you know, any clothing or shoes that you'll need um, to, to make your program a success. Um, obviously, those are things that you'll need to consider. Um, some of your meals, uh, if you refer to the program brochure page, you can get a good idea of what meals have cost in previous years. Um, in country personal expenses. So, you know, you know, things like if you want to go out for a, a coffee in the afternoon or if you want to go out in the evening. Um, any souvenirs that you might purchase, um, those will be on your own expense. We recommend that all students also um, attend an international travel consultation prior to departure. So this will be either a meeting on the um, at the Student Health Center or with your primary care physician to discuss travel, travel to Cyprus, um, any outstanding health concerns that your provider may have that you need to address prior to going to Cyprus. Um, and then there is a 150 application fee that you'll submit when you submit your application. If you're not admitted to the program or if the program is canceled for some reason, that 150 is refunded. And then there will be also a $50 administrative fee um, added to your statement of fees and accounts um, for the global education program. There are scholarships available. So uh, on our website, you can access the list of scholarships that are offered by OIA and also by other campus departments and units um, all around Ohio State. So it's important to start planning early. Um, the scholarship deadlines vary, so they're not necessarily in line with the application uh, for the program. Um, for instance, our application deadline for the program is January 4th. And um, the application for our common scholarship uh, through our office will be sometime in, in mid-January. So they don't kind of line up. So you want to be sure to, you're doing your research and planning out when you're going to submit your scholarship applications. Um, there are also program-specific scholarship applications, um, campus-specific. So if you are a Mansfield student, um, for instance, there is a Mansfield uh, travel grant available. And again, um, plan early for your scholarships. Make sure you don't miss any important deadlines. Um, and I always advise students that, you know, while there are lots of scholarships out there, it's rare that students do get their program fully funded by scholarships. So you will need to plan to pay for part of your, uh, at least part of your program fee out of pocket. Um, financial aid is also available. So if you do access financial aid, 
to pay for your time here at Ohio State. Um, you can meet with the financial aid office discuss, to discuss how the increased cost of attendance may impact um, your financial aid package. I should have mentioned at the beginning that if you do have any questions that you can enter those in the um, in the Q&A so that we can make sure that we get everybody's uh, questions answered um, and uh, everybody has all the information that they need. So eligibility for this program, uh, GPA of 2.5 or higher um, and a completion of two semesters of undergraduate education by the time that you travel. So the earliest you could travel is the end of your freshman year. Um, if you are a senior, you need to plan to not graduate prior to traveling on the program. Um, so essentially, you know, you need to be a full degree seeking student and not graduated in order to travel on this program. Um, currently, um, entry into Cyprus could be contingent on a negative COVID test or proof of vaccination or both. Um, COVID restrictions are still changing. Um, so, you know, just to kind of keep that in mind that that is a possibility. The application deadline. So deadline for this program and for many of our programs that travel in May is January 4th. So you'll need to have your online application submitted by the 4th of January. Um, while there are no rolling admissions, um, I do advise that students don't wait until the last minute to submit their application. Um, if you run into any um, sort of technical difficulties or have any questions, you wanna make sure that, you know, there is someone in the office able to help you and that you do, do give yourself plenty of time. Um, when you submit your application, you will be, uh, you will need to pay the 150 application fee. Um, part of the application is also um, answering um, a few application questions. Um, in addition to your academic record, these personal academic or personal questions are really all we have to go by to determine whether or not you're a good fit for this program. Um, so I would encourage you to, you know, uh, spend some time that making sure that you're answering these questions thoroughly and thoughtfully. We ask you things like, why are you planning to study abroad? Um, what drew you to this particular program? Um, and then notification of admission. So we will uh, close the application window on January 4th at midnight, um, and then we will evaluate all applications. And sometime in mid to late January, we will have a decision and you'll receive an email letting you know um, of your status to the program. Uh, while we do ask for passport information at the time of application, it's not necessarily a requirement, but again, um, please be sure that you are, you know, promptly submitting that passport application so you don't get stuck at the end um, without a passport um, as you would not be able to travel. Health and safety. So our office um, is committed to maximizing health and safety for all travelers on our global education programs. Um, we use many resources, including our own risk management team, the U.S. Department of State and the Center for Disease Control, to make sure that all of our programs and the activities that happen on those programs are um, safe and providing a good atmosphere for our students. Um, if parents have questions or if you have other questions about the safety protocols or how a, a program is approved, um, you can reach out to me or you can review the information on the website. Um, so we do, you know, from the beginning. From the time that a program is even, um, you know, suggested to our office, we begin evaluating whether or not the location is safe and whether the activities that you'll be doing on program are safe. Um, and then we continue that through the duration of the program. So I will, I don't see any questions yet. I will go ahead and um, stop sharing my screen and turn it over. Um, I know that Professor Constantinou had also a presentation, so I will go ahead and turn it over to him. And again, if you do have any questions, please make sure that you are sticking those in the chat. You stopped sharing for some reason. Oh, there you go. Okay. Everybody sees my screen? 
Okay, so in the interest of time, maybe we'll uh, shorten it a little bit because I have a lot of uh, PowerPoint slides from all of these uh, two visits. Like I said uh, before, I'm a native of Cyprus, so you will get the native experience that you probably don't get in a lot of programs. Um, I know a lot of uh, people and we'll get to do a lot of, you know, things while uh, there you have uh, guaranteed uh, experiences to last you for at least one lifetime, I would say two, but uh, uh, you'll find out uh, for yourselves if you come. I, like I said, I offered the program uh, twice. I created the course from uh, scratch myself. And as it stands, it's the geography of the European Union. It counts for three credit hours. I give you some of the background information where it applies. Uh, you can, uh, you know, check it out. Like I said, I resubmitted the thing as a sustainability course for credit hours, and uh, hopefully, it, I will hear from them soon about the outcome. Uh, we'll uh, wait a little longer. I waited for a long time, so a little longer, it shouldn't be a big problem. Here, I give you the um, little summary of the students that took the class uh, before. In terms of uh, majors, we have uh, geographic information uh, science, GIS. We have uh, neuroscience, uh, two international studies uh, majors, marketing undecided astronomy, finance, uh, pre-law, accounting. And uh, the class of uh, 2018, I had two freshmen, three sophomores, three juniors, and one senior. <clears throat> then I had the class of uh, 2019. It was 15 uh, students. In uh, 2018, it was nine. So in this case, you see that the, the majors were broader. The course appeals to a lot of majors. Probably, you know, you are in one of these majors. If you are not, you can always uh, talk to your advisors and uh, clear it out with them before you, you know, follow through. Okay, here is the second class, the 2019 class. No freshmen, five sophomores, six juniors, and four seniors. So it varies from. Uh, year to year, I guess. On uh, this uh, slide, I put the links to student videos. So they are also on uh, the brochure of the program on the OIA page. Please uh, feel free to go there and uh, check them out and hear what the students that participated in the program already had to say. And here is this uh, five students that uh, wrote these uh, testimonials and uh, the one in the middle here she's attending a pharmacy school uh, right now she was also a step student i don't know if any one of you is a step student she used her money for the program that's one of the things that a lot of step students actually use their money for here are their names Again, they are on the brochure of the program. Get there and check them out. This is the cover of the textbook that I use for my class. And uh, a little outline, basically, the geography of Europe with, as I mentioned at the beginning, a sustainability bent. That's how I wrote the course in the new title. If it gets approved, it's going to be the geography of the European Union and the challenges of sustainability with a major emphasis on the sustainability uh, development uh, goals actually, and how they relate more specifically to Cyprus, the prioritized sustainability development goals of Cyprus and the whole uh, course is structured uh, along those. A little uh, geography lesson here is a map of the European Union down here in the in this area here, this little red, that's where Cyprus is. Uh, and uh, here is the surrounding area, we must say. If there is one uh, place on the planet that is really at the crossroads is Cyprus. 
We have uh, Israel, Lebanon to the east, Turkey to the north, Egypt to the south, Greece to the west. And uh, there is a lot of uh, connections from uh, both air airports in the Republic of Cyprus, we should say, to all kinds of European destinations. Given that uh, Ohio State relaxed uh, the travel uh, policy, I'll give you a couple of examples from uh, you know, the previous uh, classes, last time, one of the students, her mother came, she's a physician, and they both uh, travel, mother and daughter, to Israel, right here, very close as you see. And from the previous uh, class, another mother came at the end of the, of the program, and they traveled uh, with uh, both of them, mother and daughter, for a little bonding, I guess, to Paris. Other students uh, traveled to Greece, to Athens, one of them to Rome, another one to London. There is a lot of uh, connections in terms of, uh, you know, doing more things since you are going to be there. All of this uh, distance, you know, you can uh, travel to Europe uh, easily and cheaply. Actually, right now is the perfect time because uh, the exchange rate uh, between uh, the dollar and the euro is the same. They are at parity. I was there this summer. And I flew from uh, Paphos, that's where the program is going to be held, in the western part of Cyprus right here. I went to Crete, which is about an hour away. It was 30 bucks, the, uh, the cost, the flight, unreal. So bear that in mind. It is uh, a big uh, bargain. And you know the cost of life actually in Cyprus, still in Greece, uh, relatively speaking, is a big bargain. I was also in Denmark. You know, Denmark is, you cannot buy much with the dollar. Okay, I won't spend more time on uh, the geography of Cyprus. Here is some of the flights, the connections. I already talked about it, I made the point. Um, we are going to, here is the city of Larnaca. That's where the major airport of the island is. The other airport is by Paphos over here, smaller. However, you can uh, fly into either one. Usually, in the previous uh, two groups, uh, students uh, fly into Larnaga and uh, I travel there and uh, I meet them and uh, we travel as a group to Paphos. We'll talk uh, more about those. It's about a couple of hours uh, ride from uh, Larnaca to Paphos. <clears throat> this uh, slide shows the university. Neapolis University is where we're going to have the class. This is an old aerial uh, view of the area. The buildings right here are part of the where the university is. However, I put this thing in here because of this is the main drag. And uh, you can uh, walk all along this. Now there is the whole area is filled with hotels. And it comes all the way over here is the tassel. You can walk every day for hours if you want, actually. There is a sidewalk, a promenade that everybody walks in front of all of these hotels. Nothing is blocked. It's like a public uh, sidewalk promenade. Here is a entrance to the university, the group uh, to the left, the 2018, uh, nine students that I had then. This is a picture of the classroom where I teach. It is an American type uh, classroom with uh, air conditioning, with uh, lights, computers, uh, smart boards, the works. Here is the Neapolis University. Uh, this is the interior of pool here. The classes are actually to the uh, right over here behind uh, this uh, building. And over here, you see the these chairs. You can come and sit here and have a cup of coffee. That's where we're going to be meeting, actually, after class uh, uh, many times. This is uh, 10 minutes away from where the classrooms are. This is a cluster of apartments uh, where you will be staying. And you see the exterior here, these two pictures. So we have the pool outside these uh, buildings and also a big pool at the hotel owned by the same people 
you are is the no inside the room where you're going to be sleeping double occupancy we said and uh, you know the little uh, uh, area downstairs where you can uh, sit around and uh, study uh, cook you want that kind of uh, stuff okay i mentioned uh, that we will be in Paphos. Paphos served as a European capital of culture in 2017. The, it's one of the big uh, things they do in Europe. Actually, it shared uh, the honor with Orhos in Denmark. This summer I was in Denmark and I visited the sister, say, CD uh, of Paphos for this uh, European capital of culture. And because of this, they made a lot of changes. Uh, they upgraded, uh, revitalized, uh, say, a lot uh, of the city. I was there this summer. You will uh, guarantee you will love it. There's a lot of, uh, you know, activity going on. Uh, night life, the place uh, becomes alive, I must say. Here is a group of the students that uh, we walk in front of all of these neoclassical uh, buildings. Uh, if anybody has any interest in architecture, you'll love this whole thing. I am actually doing research on this as we speak. So I found out a lot of um, you know stuff about all of these. Here is another picture of the promenade that I mentioned before. Right here, it goes around and it gets to the castle over here. And we went behind the castle at that time with the first group. See the sunset over here uh, with this picture. This is uh, the Paphos uh, expansive archaeological uh, park, I should say. It's part of the UNESCO World Heritage. We have the tombs of the kings up here in the front of the picture, the students outside before we entered into the into the park. Right here, this lady is a tour guide. And then we have these uh, world-class mosaics within this, uh, within this uh, park. And uh, some of the columns here, that's me hiding behind the column there. Uh, Paphos is a historic place. Uh, we have the visit of St. Paul here. You know, when Paphos was the capital of of uh, Cyprus during the uh, Roman occupation. You see a close up of the view. You see the painting by Raphael here of this visit of St. Paul and the students down here in Ayos Neophytos Monastery that we visit among other places. Here is the same uh, thing. Uh, <clears throat> I have a total of uh, six, uh, what the officially we call structured educational experiences and uh, like I said, it's a geography of the European Union of course. Cyprus is the easternmost member of the European Union and the Eurozone. And we visit uh, the European Union house in the capital. We spend actually three nights in the capital. We go here for one lecture. You see the students of the second group outside, the students of the first group inside where they give us this lecture about the EU. And uh, we have other lectures and visits. The, this one up here is from the first group. It's a visit at the Central Bank of Cyprus for a finance economic uh, type uh, lecture. This one over here is the second group. This is the meeting room of the Ministry of Foreign Affairs for the geopolitics of the Eastern Mediterranean. See the students in front of all these microphones and uh, stuff where they gave us the briefing and, uh, you know, to ask questions and uh, discussion and those kinds of things. This uh, picture is from uh, the one with the flowers. And this one here is outside the presidential uh, palace of Cyprus, the equivalent, say, of the White House, a historic uh, building that we get to visit. Uh, and we post out side of it and the gardens over here. This is the walls of Nicosia, the capital, the Venetian walls. And you see some other pictures of the city, the Mira Reds in the background here, the Turkish sector 
in the northern part. We don't get to go there, but uh, it, you see it in the picture here. And the main uh, drug is called the Lidra Street right here. Okay, we also go to the mountains. Here is a visit to the, you know, Pico Monastery, Macarios, Cachu. We go to uh, villages, land use and that kind of stuff. Here is Omodos, one of the main wine producing villages of Cyprus. Uh, Cyprus is a unique uh, place, island. You know, you have this uh, unity, I call it in diversity. You go from the beach to the high mountains, you see how the landscape uh, changes in a short distance. Here is a visit to this winery, uh, grapes in the background, castles. We have, uh, you know, Curion Open Amphitheater, the Colossi Castle on top of that uh, castle. The students here, we visit the waterfront of uh, the second largest city of Cyprus, the major port is called Lemesos. It's a view from the marina here. This is uh, Aphrodite's rock, the most popular place in Cyprus. You see the students in front of this and a couple of other pictures of this most famous you know, place in Cyprus. Uh, this is uh, breakfast every morning and at the hotel, the main hotel with uh, other residents. We had our own table as you see here and uh, some of the food that you will eat you'll be eating. Like I said before, food is still a bargain in Cyprus and on top of it, tasty. Dancing right here, local uh, dances, uh, handicrafts. <clears throat> Visit uh, with the first group to my village. Uh, some additional uh, places that we visit. The sea caves up here, Aphrodite is uh, Baths, the Blue Lagoon over here, probably one of the most spectacular beaches in the Cyprus, and this gorge, the Avagas Gorge, right here. The uh, first day, usually before you depart, the students depart from Cyprus, the university organizes this Cypriot night out, they call it. It's uh, at this uh, Coral Beach uh, resort. They own the both. And uh, everybody dresses up as you see here from these two different uh, groups. Uh, all the food you can eat, uh, drink, uh, dance with uh, the rest of the people that uh, are there at the time. And okay. I think that's it. Okay, I'm, I'm, I'm gonna move on because I know we're short on time here. As I said, I'm the Chief Global Strategy Officer, um, and I've actually had the pleasure of developing programs across multiple universities. So this is kind of like my dream class. So I'll tell you a bit about my thinking on this. It's a focus on health and wellness, and it's really a focus on health and wellness in young adults. Uh, it's being reviewed for the final sign-off for four credits for the Gen Ed theme on health and wellness. So Stavros and I have come up with this great plan because I wanted a course where we would be in a country that had wonderful cultural opportunities, beautiful weather, friendly people, safe, uh, English spoken, and uh, you could in a short amount of time, if you take both classes, you could get eight credits in a month, all right, while you enjoy this total experience in the Mediterranean. So a little bit about what the health and wellness course is gonna be about. I'm really trying to get it set up so that you will complete one credit within the first, I would say day in Cyprus, because it's going to be online. We've got small health and wellness modules that you're gonna start before you leave for Cyprus, or you can do on the plane, all right? And you would have one credit done at that time. All of the cultural immersion activities that you do um, while we are in Cyprus that um, Dr. Constantino has set up, which are fabulous, they will be connected to health and wellness themes. So as you're going through those wonderful cultural experiences, you're also gonna be thinking about how you're gonna blog or vlog about uh, your experience and how it connects to health and wellness. 
There's a lot of focus in the health and wellness course on issues that are pertinent to young adults. So um, things like stress and anxiety, um, diet, exercise, sexual health. It's really kind of an overarching look at how to keep yourself healthy, maintain your well-being, and a comparison between what we do in the U.S. and what we do in Cyprus. And you'll see um, that it's um, for both the geography class and the health and wellness class, we lecture on different days at different times, okay? So there's never a reason why you can't take both classes. Um, but we actually bring the classes together at the end to work on similar projects, one from the geography perspective and one from the health and wellness perspective. Um, you will have, I think, great opportunities to enjoy both Cyprus and all it has to offer, as well as Dr. Constantino was saying, if you choose before and after, you're very close to Greece, to Italy, to Israel, to a million places where you can pop off to. Um, the housing accommodations are great. The food is wonderful. Uh, you will, for the health and wellness course, complete everything you need for the four credits. Um, I've kept the required graded components down to a minimum. I wanna see what learning takes place, but I'm also not gonna overwhelm you with um, an overabundance of busy work. You're gonna get right to thinking about health and wellness and sustainability. So that being said, I think this course or this program, the two courses, health and wellness and geography with a focus on sustainability, we tried to create the best bang for your buck in the most beautiful place during the most beautiful time of the year that we could think of. So if you wanna tell your fellow classmates, we really set it up so that as soon as you have finished two semesters, you can take part. Some international opportunities require you to be an upperclassman, we do not. There aren't prerequisites for the health and wellness course. It has um, all to do with health and wellness of young adults and nothing to do with hospitals or blood pressures or anything specifically related to the nursing profession, okay? It's the overall scheme of health and wellness. So I think that gives you, you know, a general overview, but uh, Stavros and I have thought long and hard about how to make this the best opportunity for you. And you can take one or both classes, um, but you could get eight credits done between May 5th and June 2nd. And in the meantime, you would be going on all these cultural excursions, wineries and olive groves and the beaches, et cetera, et cetera. And it's fabulous. And there's no better ambassador to lead these cultural activities than Dr. Constantino, because he knows everybody in Cyprus, everything to do. He's got connections everywhere. So it's kind of like having your own concierge service as you go and study uh, abroad in Cyprus. Thank so you. Questions? Questions? Anything in chat? Nothing. Okay. So as was mentioned, um, it, regardless of which course you take, you will all do the field trips that, that were spoken about. Uh, so they, um, you will participate, all participate as a large group in the, in those field trips. Um, so, you know, regardless of whether you choose the nursing or the geography or both. Are there any questions about application process or anything else? I think they're hoping to take between 15 and 20 students. Um, and um, you can see previous year's groups were about that size. And that hope is that we will take a mix of, you know, Columbus campus and Mansfield campus students. I don't know, you know, if anybody on here is a Mansfield campus student. Um, but that is the hope. So this is a, you know, a first of its kind program in that aspect too, that we are kind of combining, you know, efforts of a, of main campus and a regional campus um, to provide this program. This is going to be absolutely fabulous. I mean, we spent a lot of time thinking about how to make this a really good learning opportunity for you. And at the same time, travel opportunity, because we want you to want to travel more and to see the world. This is all part of becoming a global citizen and that's what we're trying to do at the Ohio State University is create global citizens. So stick your toe in the water, put your application in, 
and you will have a fabulous, fabulous time. Yeah, application window is open for you to apply at any time. Um, so you can start an application now. And as long as you've submitted it by the January 4th deadline, um, you'll be considered for the program. Uh, so I do not have any further information to share. Um, I would be happy to stay on and answer any questions that come. Otherwise, the, um, this is the end of the presentation. So you can, um, you can feel free to leave the, the meeting. Thank you for attending. Thank you, everybody. We look forward you, to receiving everybody. your application. If anybody has any question, I will hang around myself and talk Cyprus. Yes, and you can always connect with me if you have questions about the health and wellness component. Okay. All righty. Thanks, Jen.